Did you know that you don't need any paid search engine optimization tools as long as you know how to use Google? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how to use Google Trends to find amazing blog post topics and how I have used it in the past to rank for some keywords in just a matter of days. So without wasting any more of your valuable time, let's jump into it. Before we move on, make sure to sign up to my free blogging masterclass by clicking the link below. In this masterclass, I teach you everything you need to know to start a successful blog this year. So to start using Google Trends, just head over to trends.google.com. And because I am in Finland, this is automatically suggesting me some searches that are trending right now here in Finland. So now what I can do is type in something here. So for example, let's do Christmas presents. Now here's where it gets interesting. So here you have these filters. So instead of just seeing like what people have searched for or how people have searched for Christmas presents in the past day, let's put last almost 20 years since 2004 and let's put it worldwide so now you can see that google trends shows these spikes and you can probably already guess where these spikes are situated around so as you can see the highest season for christmas presents is during december and it quickly dies down and it's completely at zero in January. So this is the main point of Google Trends. It will show you exactly how people are searching for a particular topic or a trend. Now before I show you how to use Google Trends to find epic blog post topics, there's one thing to keep in mind and this is an important one. So Google Trends won't show you the exact search volumes for these key phrases. Instead it will show you the percentage based or relative search volumes. And if this sounds technical, don't worry. Let me show you exactly what this means. As you can see, these, these graphs right here, they go from 0 to 100. So this 100 is in percentage, or this graph is in percentage, not in actual search volume. So this does not tell me that there are 97 searches for Christmas presents during December 9th to 15th. Not at all. Instead, this actually tells me that what is the relative search volume compared to the maximum search volume during this time period. So for example, here you can see, or actually it's here, during December 15th to 21st, you can see that the Christmas presents has 100 as its search volume. So this shows you that during this five year period, this is when the search volume for Christmas presents was at its highest. And everything else you see here is relative to that point. So for example, let's say that for the sake of assumption, let's say that there were 1 million searches for Christmas presents here. Now, because here in 2020, the number was just 80 during that time, that means that here it was only 800,000 searches per month. But the whole point here is that you can't really tell how many times a particular topic gets searched for, but you will just see the trend and you will just basically see if there are any people searching for that topic or not. So now let me show you how I use Google Trends to find amazing blog post topic ideas that are relevant and trending right now and where you actually have a great chance for ranking high with a relatively new site and with a relatively small amount of work. So let's get started. So Google Trends not only shows these seasonalities or trends that are going on related to a particular search query, but they also show you these related queries. And for this particular search, this doesn't really ring that much bells. But let's see, for example, what happens if we type in AI or artificial intelligence and see what's been going on during the past five years. So as you can see, first of all, in this graph, there's very st steady growth or not growth at all, to be honest. And then all of a sudden, since the release of ChatGPT, AI has become a massively popular trend that's like five or even seven times more popular than it was like two years ago or three years ago. <clears throat> now, if we scroll down to these related queries and see this rising bar here, these are the breakout terms during this five year time period worldwide. So basically, as you can see, here's ChatGPT AI, ChatGPT, AI ChatGPT. And basically, these are all terms that are related to this AI search query that have become popular during this time period. 
This is the key to finding successful blog post topic ideas. So the whole point here is that you can type in your niche or some topic in your niche to this Google Trends search box and then you scroll down to see these related search queries. And now, for example, let's choose one of these related queries, for example, this ChatGPT. And I'm clicking on it and I'm going to see this report. So as you can see, naturally, there is no search volume for that before last year because ChatGPT wasn't really a thing. And then all of a sudden, there's a huge spike in search volume and it's growing growing all the time, it's still going up. Nonetheless, this shows me that ChatGPT is a popular term that has a ton of search volume and that might be a good blog post topic to write about. But here's the thing, when it comes to using the time ranges in Google Trends, I don't really recommend doing like five years or even one year. This is because those kinds of trends that have lasted already for like a year or two, they are already competitive. If you think about something like ChatGPT, that is still kind of a trend and a trendy topic but it's also something that has a ton of coverage. So there are these big news outlets and blogs and whatnot, and they all have written a ton of content related to ChatGPT. And this makes it almost impossible to write a blog post about ChatGPT that would actually rank high on Google. So what you wanna do with these time ranges instead is to use a time range that is way shorter than five years or even a year. I would like to do like seven days or 30 days or perhaps even 90 days. This way you can pick up these very new and very relevant trends that have just popped up into the scene where there is not that much competition because these news outlets and bloggers haven't still figured those topics out. And this is where you have maximum chances for ranking high. Of course, the downside is that those trends might be very short-lived and you might end up writing a blog post about a topic that would be completely irrelevant in two weeks or so. But there is always some risks involved when targeting these trendy topics. And I will actually talk to you about this a bit later down the line in this video. So let's go back to this AI. And instead of doing past five years, we can do something way shorter than that. So let's do like past 90 days. So now this shows me recent trends in AI space, not the ones that have occurred in the past five years, but trends that have popped up into the scene during the past three months. And here's where Google Trends really shines. So it shows these recent trends that are basically just coming up into the scene or that have popped up into the scene like this ideogram, for example. Now this is super valuable information because this is a relatively new trend. As you can see, 60 days ago or so, that was not even a thing, and now it already has a ton of search volume. So now let's see how many blog posts there are on Google that are actually reviewing this ideogram.ai tool, because this is something that we could probably do if we want to rank high for this kind of a topic. So the idea is to see if there's a ton of competition or if it's just something that has just popped up and that has no competition at all. And to get a nice estimate for the number of reviews this particular service has, I'm going to use this all in title column operator in the Google search box. So this will filter out all the pages that do not have these exact words in their title and show only the results that have these words. And I've actually made a separate blog post about how to use this operator in more detail. And if you want to check that one out, you can look at the description of this video. For now, it's just good for you to know that this is a great way for estimating the number of competing pages. So as we can see, the number is only 43. So there is very, very little competition in Ideogram AI, yet it has a ton of search volume here and it's going up like crazy. Now, if we compare this to something like ChatGPT review, you can actually see that ChatGPT has almost 10,000 reviews. And if we only search for ChatGPT, there are 11 million results. So ChatGPT is way out of our reach. There is absolutely no chance for you to rank high for ChatGPT or ChatGPT review because there's so much competition already. But this ideogram is a perfect example of something that has very little competition and still a ton of search volume. Now, here's a little surprise for you. So I have actually written a blog post about this tool, ideogram.ai, that I have been talking about in this video. So now I'm going to show you exactly how this blog post performs. And it's only been like four weeks since I released this blog post. So it's a very young and very new blog post, but because there's not much competition, it started to rank right off the bat. So here's what the performance looks like. 
So here's my Google Search Console report for the past three months. So the URL is this ideogram AI review that I just showed you here. And as you can see, I wrote this post October 1st. It very quickly picked up steam. And as you can see, only one week in, it had 1,800 clicks per day, which is crazy good. But as you can see, it's already going down. Well, there's another spike as well. But as you can see, this topic is quickly dying down. So, but nonetheless, the point I'm trying to make here is that this kind of a trendy topic can land you at the top spot on Google very quickly, but then the success will very, very rapidly diminish. So this is the issue with using Google Trends to find blog post topics. It can for sure show you some amazing trends and some amazing topics that you might want to write about before the others, but those trends are always volatile and they might go down in just a couple of days. So if you're using this strategy to find blog post topics, what I'd highly suggest you doing is only like post like five or 10% of your blog posts about these trendy topics that you have discovered using Google Trends and let the rest of them be evergreen. So what I mean by evergreen is something like Pythagorean theorem. This is something that's not trending. This is, this is something that will always be the same basically. So as you can see during the past 20 years, it has a steady, well, it's actually increasing, but it has a steady traffic and it's always going to get traffic. So as long as you rank high for this kind of a topic, you will get a ton of visitors to your blog post. Of course, with this kind of an evergreen topic, there's also huge competition. So for example, if we look at like Pythagorean theorem here, we can see that there are like more than 100,000 results. So I'd highly suggest playing around with Google Trends a bit, but then I will also say that you should mostly go for these evergreen topics in your blog posts. And that's basically it when it comes to using Google Trends as a blogger.